When you're watching a live broadcast, always remember that anything could happen. Live broadcasts are engaging because they're unfiltered and anything could happen. But occasionally, the unthinkable happens. Imagine watching a news program when suddenly the person speaking ends their own life right in front of you without warning. That's exactly what happened in the following stories, and while each is different, are equally dark and disturbing. These are the 10 most shocking deaths caught on live television. Number one is Christine Chubbuck's suicide. Christine Chubbuck was a 29-year-old television news reporter for WTOG and WXLT-TV in Sarasota, Florida. Chubbuck suffered from mental health issues from an early age, and her severe depression was no secret to her family. Upon moving into her family's summer home, she painted and decorated her bedroom the way that a girl in her early teens would, though Chubbuck was in her mid-20s. On July 15, 1974, Christine decided to make a change to her morning show called Suncoast Digest and opened with a live news broadcast. She briefly reported on several news events, but the videotape for the last piece that she was talking about actually malfunctioned and wouldn't play. Taking this opportunity, she calmly looked into the camera and spoke softly, saying, in keeping with Channel 40's policy of bringing you the latest in blood and guts and in living color, you are going to see another first attempted suicide. Suddenly, she pulled out a revolver and shot herself in the side of the head. WXLT cut the news feed, but it was too late, and Christine was rushed to the hospital where she died. Number two is a racing crash. Some televised sporting events can be dangerous, despite being broadcast for all the world to witness. However, it's arguable that there are few as life-threatening as Formula One racing. The competitors are strapped into a machine that can hit 62 miles per hour in less than two seconds and hit top speeds of over 200 miles per hour and pulls in more Gs than anything NASA has ever launched into space. It can be a deadly premise. Artin Senna da Silva was no stranger to these risks. The beloved Italian driver raced for the last time on May 1st, 1994 during the San Marino Grand Prix. During the seventh lap of the race, the 34-year-old was in the lead and was approaching a turn when his car ran head-on into a cement wall at 135 miles an hour. His car drifted off to the side of the track with the front right half completely demolished as the live TV camera operator zoomed in on Senna, seated motionless in the cockpit. He suffered three head traumas in the crash, any of which would have killed them on their own. He was pronounced dead at Madry Hospital later that day. Number three is the Olympic Massacre. On September 5th, 1972, the 20th Olympic Summer Games were being held in Munich, West Germany, when they suddenly became the stage for a terrorist attack. Orchestrated by the Palestinian group known as Black September, the motivation for the attack was to have 236 prisoners released from jails in Israel and Germany. Between the hours of 4 a.m. and 5 a.m., eight terrorists broke into the Olympic Village and entered the sleeping quarters of Israeli athletes. Once Black September started taking hostages, some of the athletes actually fought back while others did their best to escape. In the chaos, two athletes were shot and killed and nine were taken hostage. The entire hostage crisis was covered live on television from outside the building, which actually ended up aiding the terrorists. Watching police movements, they thwarted a plan to take them out. When German police failed a rescue attempt, five of the eight terrorists were killed and all nine hostages were murdered, all while while cameras rolled outside. Number four is the magician's massive heart attack. On April 15, 1984, famous British comedian and magician Tommy Cooper was performing on a live television variety show called Live From Her Majesties. A frequent sufferer of stage fright, the 63-year-old entertainer was a heavy drinker and cigar smoker, and his health began declining quickly in the 1970s. Live From Her Majesties would have been his last performance, and as millions of viewers watched live at home, Cooper's stage assistant helped him put on his robe in preparation 
position for his next act. As she did the robe up, however, Cooper collapsed into a sitting position, breathing heavily and looking shocked, while the audience simply laughed, thinking that it was part of the act. Cooper then fell backwards into a stage curtain, and the audience erupted with even louder laughter and applause. However, in reality, Cooper just suffered a massive heart attack and was gasping for air. The show quickly cut to commercials while he was carried off to the hospital, already dead. Number five is gored by a bull. If the famous quote, don't mess with the bull or you'll get the horns needed a modern origin, then this story would definitely be it. Victor Barrio was a Spanish bullfighter from Segovia who, at 29 years old, lost his life doing the activity that he loved. On July 9th, 2016, during the Feria de Angel Festival in Spain, the matador faced off against a 1,166 pound bull named Lorenzo on live television. However, during the fight, a large gust of wind blew up his cape, which was just distracting enough to give Lorenzo the opportunity to gore him. While a large crowd of thousands and even more at home watched live, the bull's horn punctured his chest, piercing his lungs and his thoracic aorta. The force lifted him up into the air, only to have Lorenzo slam him back down into the dirt. Pinned, the bull did even more damage, piercing the matador several more times, while horrified viewers watched both in person and at home. Barrio's lifeless body was carried off to the hospital where he was instantly pronounced dead. He became the first matador to die in the profession since 1985, which is quite surprising considering how dangerous it is. Number six is the bus hostage shooting. Officially known as the Rizal Park hostage taking incident, this law enforcement fiasco turned tragedy had thousands of people sitting in front of their televisions wondering how something so graphic could be broadcast to the public. On August 23, 2010, former police inspector Rolando Mendoza boarded a bus filled with Hong Kong tourists in the city of Manila in the Philippines. Rolando came equipped with a handgun and an M16 assault rifle, taking 28 hostages and demanding his job in the police force back after he had been discharged for criminal offenses. His brother approached the bus, attempting to reason with him, but was instantly arrested. However, inside the bus, Rolando watched a live news feed of his brother's arrest and killed two hostages. Still live on television himself, Rolando began executing even more hostages. SWAT teams outside of the bus failed to gain entry to it, and after several attempts, they threw teams tear gas inside, forcing Rolando out, where police quickly shot and killed him. Eight hostages were killed in total, plus Rolando, while the entire world watched live. Number seven is the car chase suicide. On September 28, 2012, 33-year-old Jodan F. Romero, a man with a long list of criminal convictions, was the focus of a live televised police chase that ended in the desert just west of Phoenix, Arizona. Romero was on the run after violating his parole and stealing a car at gunpoint. The chase was shot from a news helicopter while Fox News' Shepard Smith commentated over the feed from the studio. However, things took a bleak turn when Romero exited his vehicle and ran frantically into the desert, tripping and displaying panicked behavior. Then, as Shepard continued to cover the chase, Romero raised a handgun to his temple and fired without warning. Believing that the chase was on a five second TV delay, which was standard for such broadcasts, Smith repeatedly ordered his team to cut away. But of course, it was too late and viewers witnessed a gruesome ending to the felon's life. After a commercial break, Shepard immediately apologized for the horrific events that people at home saw, blaming human error for the mistake. Number eight is the royal family attack. On April 30th, 2009, the Dutch royal family was taking part in a parade for their country's national holiday known as Queen's Day. The parade was held in the city of Apeldoorn in the Netherlands and was being broadcast live to viewers who could not attend or didn't want to brave the crowds of people. After the bus containing the royal family and Queen Beatrix drove by, Karst Roland Tates, a 38-year-old Dutch man, carried out a terror attack, the first one against the royal family 
recently in modern history. To the shock and horror of everyone watching, Tate drove his black Suzuki Swift car through the crowds of people lining the streets. He then sped towards the bus containing the Queen and her family, but missed and crashed head-on into a monument, fatally injuring himself. Tate's car attack ultimately killed nine people and injured ten others, whose motives for the attack are still unknown, but whose actions were all caught live for all to witness. Number nine is a highway suicide. On April 30th, 1998, around 3 p.m., 40-year-old hotel maintenance worker Daniel Jones got out of his truck on a busy Los Angeles freeway and started threatening people as he waved around a shotgun. After some time, police managed to block off the road and a news helicopter began shooting live footage of the standoff. Of course, they had no way to know what was about to happen. Jones, who had recently been diagnosed with cancer and HIV, was a deeply frustrated and troubled man who could not afford his medical insurance and was furious with the health maintenance organization. Getting back in his truck, he set it ablaze, but after a few seconds emerged, unable to stand the pain and tearing his smoking clothing off. He then stood on the edge of the freeway but couldn't bring himself to jump. That's when finally, he grabbed the shotgun from his burning truck and shot himself through the chin while viewers at home watched in sheer terror. And number 10 is the news team that was murdered. On August 23, 2015, Allison Parker, a news reporter for WDBJ-TV, was conducting a live interview with Executive Director Vicki Gardner from the local Chamber of Commerce. The two were standing outside Bridgewater Plaza near Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia, discussing upcoming plans and events for the 50th anniversary of the town's reservoir. However, what should have been a rather mundane broadcast turned into a horrifying ordeal when, in the middle of the interview, Gardner, Parker, and the cameraman for the segment, Adam Ward, were all shot multiple times at close range. Soon after the shocking event, the feed cut back to a shocked anchor who threw to commercial. The shooter was former WDBJ reporter Vester Lee Flanagan II, who was fired from the station due to disruptive conduct in 2013. Both Allison Parker and Adam Ward were killed at the scene, but Gardner survived her gunshot wound. Flanagan shot himself during a car chase with police several hours later and died in hospital. So, those were the 10 most shocking deaths caught live on television. As always, I want to know from you in the comments, were there any other live deaths that were broadcasted that were so disturbing that they deserve to be on this list? I also want to give a big thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. They have an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original shows, and more for nearly all devices like iPhones, Androids, iPads, tablets, tablets, and more. Audiobooks are the perfect way to pass the time, especially if you're doing something time-consuming like traveling or doing chores around the house. And Audible is offering a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial to give you a chance to try out the service if you use the link in the description, audible.com slash Matthew. Lately, I've been in a creepy mood and I've been listening to Stephen King's It, one of the many horror audiobooks that they have. You can get that book or any other audiobook free along with a 30-day free trial at Audible audible.com slash Matthew. But as always, I really appreciate you guys coming by today. Remember to come back tomorrow and every weekday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'll have a brand new video for you. I'll see you then.